Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Jason, and uh, I don't do long distance running. And I don't read all textbooks as well. So if you're in if you're something like that, then there is hope. Uh, I came to Australia in 2009, and um, uh, I am uh, I came to do my postgraduate, and I graduated at the middle of 2010. When I graduated, I was uh, not a PR, and to this day, I'm still not a PR. So, um, I guess on this panel, I want to just represent uh, the job seekers out there, and I think uh, you guys would be in the same as me. So, very briefly, uh, what happened was uh, after I graduated, I um, did an internship, and after three months after that, I got a job at a company that was not my internship company. So, I'm going to tell a story of how I I went about that job search. Um, the whole process actually started about uh, one year before I graduated. So I did see someone, um, a few people, like put their hands up, say, oh, I'm graduating next year. So uh, well done for being here. I, <coughs> um, but one year I started just trying to understand what, what there was uh, out, out here in Australia. Um, there are basically a few areas that I had to, to look at. Uh, one, I didn't know what uh, companies there were in the industries that I was interested. Another one was within those companies, uh, what those roles meant. So it might be, for instance, um, uh, if you are looking for a business analyst role, uh, well, what does a business analyst do? If you are to be interviewed for a business analyst role and, and you know, uh, the interviewer asks, what do you understand would be your responsibilities in this job? And you just kind of go, uh, I think I uh, analyze, you know, like the business. Uh, you, you wouldn't get very far. So, um, besides starting early, um, some practical things I did was uh, draft a few copies of my CV and send out to people who were working in the industry. I did happen to have a few friends, like, you know, housemate of this friend, or just even through your contacts in Korea. Please take a look at my CV. And what ended up happening was not that they gave me back um, my, the CV with some amendments, but eventually morphed into like five or six different versions of my CV, depending on what role I would be applying for. Um, I think the analogy to use is, um, I'm sure everyone here has used like a PC, a desktop, laptop, iPad, etc. If you look at your CV as like the desktop space, there's a finite space, and you look at different things you've accomplished, maybe your qualifications, your internships, your maybe some work experience, maybe some projects you've been on, as like little icons on the desktop. Within the finite space of your desktop, what you want to do is to be able to um, expand some of those folders to take up more space on the desktop, if that makes sense. So um, within your CV, if you're applying for um, for instance, uh, uh, and a position where you have to uh, arrange lots of events. What you want to do is highlight those areas of your uh, maybe internship where you did a similar role or some volunteer work you did that you organized a big event, maybe a club that you joined that organized a big event. Uh, alternatively, if you are going for like uh, maybe a graduate accounting role, what you want to do is uh, talk a bit more about um, those subjects that are relevant. Uh, some soft skills that shows you can work with people in Australia and basically, you know, double-clicking on those folders to make them more visible within the CV, if that makes sense. Um, besides that, we also had this really fun time with a few of my friends where uh, we actually uh, gave each other, like, mock interviews. And you might think that that might sound like very geeky, right? I mean, who talks about, you know, interviews and when you're, like, on Saturday night or something like that? But it actually turned out quite fun because uh, we would be like walking past each other in the in the dock in the hallway and we'd be like, so what do you want to join IT? And so give me three reasons why you can do this or what's your greatest weakness and stuff like that. And just to be able to articulate that again and again uh, for someone uh, who might find it difficult on myself to, you know, just bring across things clearly was really helpful. Um, Besides that, I might have heard from Andrew that you know many people get into into industries like consulting based on connections. So what do you do if you don't have these uh, connections? 
I'm usually here in Australia alone, so I don't have, you know, my mom's or sons or, or cousin or whatever to, to, to back me up. So basically, uh, I have to do my networking myself. Now, I should say that the word networking really uh, scares me because, you know, I really hate the feeling of going to a room with uh, like 50 strangers and, you know, oh, I want to get something out of this person, I want to get something out of that. It seems so, like, awkward to me. So, what I used was uh, LinkedIn. Um, uh, is anyone here already on LinkedIn? <laughs> Great. Um, uh, you, might, you might know that LinkedIn is after Facebook and Twitter, the third largest social networking site out there, and it has a very strong professional slant to it. So, why is it quite simple? I just search for recent graduates from my school, in the industry that I want to be in, within Melbourne, say, you know, 50 kilometers from postcode 3000, and up came, you know, a couple of hundred names. Um, coming in as, uh, I did work a bit before my uh, postgraduate, so I, I came in not at an entry level, but kind of as a consultant, which is just one level of graduate associates. So the people that I wanted to speak to were people a couple of levels above me, if that makes sense. I wouldn't be dropping an email to a partner or a director. Um, they'll probably tell someone like Anisha to put a black mark against my name. But uh, I um, I spoke to someone like a senior who's like, you know, my direct superior or maybe a manager or even if the person was kind of young and someone that, you know, it's a friend or a friend, maybe even a senior manager but not too high up. And basically, I just wrote them messages something like, Hi, I'm new to Melbourne. I'm really interested in this industry. And I saw that, you know, you had experience in this role for a number of years. Um, I studied a similar course to you. Would it be possible for me to just come by your office at a time and place of your choosing? Um, and then just um, ask you, like, what you do for work. It was as simple as that. Um, my first response was encouraging. The guy did agree to meet me. And before I knew it, I knew it, I was, you know, um, all dressed up in business wear, somewhere along Collins Street, buying this random guy a cup of coffee. And um, I know it sounds dodgy, but it's not. <laughs> um, I actually had a, a list of, you know, um, questions, very simple questions like, so what exactly do you do in your job? Or what's a typical work day for you? Um, what was the hiring process that you went through to get in? Or, you know, if you are warming up to the person, well, this is my CV. If you take a look and see what roles based on your knowledge I could fit in, even if it's not your role, well, you know your company, where could I fit in? And finally, I always end off with, do you know anyone else that I could speak to? Um, do also realize that, you know, uh, while you're doing this, the person is kind of assessing his mind, whether well, could, could you work in this company? And, um, you also know that you know uh, you're not really asking something very great of, of this person if the person wants to recommend you in, because uh, most companies have uh, like a, a referral fee as well. So it's in his interest to get good candidates through the door uh, for his company because it saves uh, HR lots of problems and he gets uh, maybe a few hundred or a few thousand dollars bonus if you eventually to get a job. So you know everyone's interest is aligned. So you shouldn't, don't have to be uh, embarrassed about asking these kind of questions. Um, before I knew it, uh, that kind of went on for about six months, and uh, six months down the road, and fifteen or fifteen or sixteen cups of coffee, I eventually uh, got enough information to be confident to do well in my interview, um, and that was before I graduated. When I did graduate, um, this, despite having all these like, things you know, under my belt, I still found it difficult. I did have uh, quite a number of rejections and I decided on a path that most of my friends did not, didn't take. Well, all my friends had, you know, in their heart they said, you know, now I've graduated, I'll get a full-time role, I'll start work, go into the working world for it. Um, I thought that, you know, well, before I go into the corporate world, I wouldn't mind exploring uh, doing some volunteer work. And, and I know as I was not a PR that many jobs were close to me, 
So I decided to apply for internships. So rather than compete with um, a few hundred other of your colleagues with the same qualifications for the same pool of jobs, I went the other way uh, and competed with people who had not graduated uh, for uh, internships. And basically based on what I learned plus um, you know the fact that I completed my my course, uh, I was a really strong candidate for internships. And I specifically chose one with not-for-profits because uh, that's something I value very much. Uh, it was a really, it was a really a fantastic time. And if any of you like me come from countries where the charities are kind of looked down upon as like second-class industries, oh, why are you working as? Oh, I work in a not-for-profit. Oh, is that because you couldn't find a job in the, the, the corporate kind of thing? If any of you come from those countries, I just want to say, you know, um, don't despise. That industry. Um, Australia is set up in such a way that uh, it's not only a viable career path, it's actually a very attractive career path. Um, the work is so fulfilling. Uh, everyone I've met in the industry is really nice. And because they are less uh, a lower density of skills in the industry, you're able to add value and manage lots of end to end projects uh, in, uh, in, a, in such an organization. Whereas in a corporate, you would probably have a very narrow function, function of work. So um, my non-profit internship went really well. Um, just by pure luck, perhaps, um, we were assigned a mentor. I was assigned like the top student from the previous year who happened to be a management consultant in McKinsey. Um, it was just great to, to find someone who was so accomplished and had the same values and that was another way that I, through him, I expanded my networks further. And at the end, the was actually not too difficult to uh, actually land uh, a consulting job. So, um, thank you. <laughs> awesome timing. Um, so, uh, this, that was my experience as an international student with uh, no relevant experience, no PR, and just uh, sharing the story of how my journey went. Uh, I hope, although many of you guys might be in different industries, I hope you can like, take pieces of that and just apply it uh, to your own situation.